Um, hi, everyone. I am the services manager here at Mies. Um, So I oversee all of the recipe upload projects, um, purchase integrations, um, you know, just sort of the organization behind the scenes that nobody really sees, but yeah. She's the guru. She makes sure that, you know, she handles all the audits, making sure nutritionals line up, costing audits. When you have a big account with a bunch of issues, you want Jess's team to go in there. Uh, she's also our recipe writing expert, but not the only one with us today because we also have Mitchell Berger. Mitchell, welcome. What Hi, you everyone. I'm the customer success engineer here at Mies, and I handle any onboarding calls as well as trainings too. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in uh, and we're going to, I'm going to take a simple recipe that was in a Word doc and then put it into a Mies account uh, and see what it looks like. And then we're gonna let Jess take over and tell us what she would do if she were adding this to just give you a simple list of tips and tricks. Here are some things we'll just, we're gonna climb into Jess's brain. It's gonna get real weird. <laughs> everybody's ready okay so here we are in our Mies account and I've got a Bordelais sauce recipe that was in a Google Doc this is what we're going to upload today so I'm going to take this uh, title I'm going to copy that and then to start a recipe we go to plus new recipe we're going to name it Bordelais sauce and there we go hit next so this comes up first this is your bulk add uh modal so from here we'll copy all of our ingredients looks like we have a couple different sets so i'm just going to copy all of this and put it here and then uh i might take these things out put it over here this out and put it over here because these are prep steps. So this is not my own personal recipe, um, which you can tell if you know me because of the all caps it makes me feel like it's yelling. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like recipes that are written like they're yelling. And we have a hack to work around that if your recipes are written that way and you don't want them to look that way in these but we'll get into that. So if we were just gonna do a direct copy paste, right? So I'm looking for a yield here. I don't see one. So I think I've got all of the information from this recipe and it is now in Mies in one way or another. Uh, yes, okay. So if I were just to do that and click done, here's what I would have. So Jess, what <laughs> would you do? Um, so there's a lot of things that when you first like paste into that initial ingredient field, um, there are just some edits that I always look for um, because I know kind of what the system is going to recognize. Um, you can see that a lot of the quantities have, they got the number, but the, the unit is now missing. Um, so bottle, like BTL, the system, Mies doesn't really know what BTL means. Um, the capital T, that's a tricky one sometimes because of like the lowercase t versus capital T. It doesn't really know what that means specifically. Um, and it looks like some of them just disappeared as far as like time. Um, yeah. And sometimes you write a recipe and you call for like, you know, four eggs and you don't have an actual word there. Um, but so it's really useful in me is to actually put that unit in there. Um, I'm imagining, I don't remember the recipe exactly, but I think it was like four sprigs of thyme or four. It was one bunch. Bunches. Yeah. Um, and then there's our teas that caused some issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so all of those things I would kind of like edit before hitting done after the paste. Um, and that way, you know, when you hit done, it's going to like, all the data is going to be preserved um, from the original recipe. Um, right. Okay, so let's start again and let's do it as if with just doing it, right? So 
we'll make this uh, Bordelais sauce, but for real and without the all caps, just for my own, um, do it like that, there you go. <laughs> okay, so here, if we were to take our ingredients, so I'm just gonna copy the top part here. We'll start there. Put that here. What should I change? So the two um, ingredients that says BN, yeah. bunch for parsley stems. Um, I would change that to the actual word bunch. Um, okay. I always like to add it. It clearly works if you don't have spaces, but just for like peace of mind, I always add a space between the number and the unit. Um, okay. So here. Yeah. I would just go through and make sure they all are separate from each other for each bay leaf. Um, the T, the two capital T's in, for sliced garlic and butter, I would change to TBSP or the word tablespoon. Um, okay. And this one, TBSP. Okay. Yep. And where it says sliced mushrooms or scrap of mushrooms, um, I would take the or scrap of mushroom and put it inside of parentheses. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to recognize that that is part of the note for that ingredient and not the um, ingredient itself. Um, and putting those in, in parentheses tells the system, hey, this belongs in this section and it's not actually part of the name of the ingredient. Um, Awesome. Okay, so let's let's just start there. We're going to say add recipe and see what happens with what we've got so far. So you're saying this parentheses should slide this over, and it did, but it also took sliced. But I yeah. want this to read mushroom sliced. So what do I do there? So in that case, um, sliced is going to be a prep action for mushrooms, um, unless you're purchasing them already sliced. But right. for this sake, we'll say that these mushrooms are being purchased whole. We're slicing them in house. If you click on the ingredient and then you click convert to prep action, um, this gives you the option to add that. So you'll search for the ingredient um, and then you can create an, whatever the name you want it to be. But in this case, it's sliced. Um, the yield percent, we can, I would say that's probably close to 100, if not maybe 90. Yeah. yeah. So that's like calculating how much are you going to lose in the process of slicing it. You'll probably lose a little bit here and there just because, you know, a little bit dropped on the floor or that was, that stem was really woody. So there's going to be a little bit of loss, but I agree with you. There's probably not a ton. So, right. All right. Now we've got our yield percent. So I add that. Yay. Add now that it's mushroom here. sliced. That's exciting. Perfect. So I can probably get rid of this piece then. Yep. Um, and you can see for shallot and carrots, those, those prep actions already existed in our system ingredients. Um, so it recognized that that's um, the prep action for those ingredients. Same thing with garlic. Hello. Yep. Hello. Sorry, Albert. Yes. There we go. Can we, uh, okay, so if we, now we want to add more ingredients because I have more and I've already hit the thing. So now what do I do? Um, there's the button down at the bottom near the middle of the screen that says add ingredients okay. and it will bring that pop up back up and you can add in bulk again from there. Okay, so now I'm going to add the wine and then we've got these. There we go. So what would you do with this? Um, for bottle, I would just type in the word bottle. Unfortunately, we don't know what size of a bottle that is. Um, so we're just gonna have to go with bottle in this situation, but um, there already exist units in the system for like a bottle, 750 milliliter, bottle right. one liter. Um, so you can choose those if you knew what size you actually bottle you were using. Um, and so you already changed the tablespoons. And then again, for sugar in the raw, I would put parentheses around um, or two packages. Um, wine vinegar, it looks good to me. 
That's such a weird abbreviation for the word packages. I'm, I'm stressed about that. <laughs> But um, so let's, let's say this is, we know this is a 750 milliliter bottle. Like I just remembered that that's what this is. So how do I, what do I do here? So in that case, you can just click on the unit itself and it, you can select it from the drop down. Um, for, for example, if you, if you knew that was a one liter bottle um, and we don't have that unit as an option, um, you could type in liter or you could type in bottle, add parentheses around one liter and it will give you the option to create a brand new unit. Oh, um, so in doing that, it's gonna bring this pop-up up and it's gonna ask you to define what that unit means. Um, and so this, is, this one's pretty simple, but one bottle means one liter. Um, and once we add that, then it will know um, for the sake of scaling or for, you know, awesome. different, like if you wanted to edit, um, sorry, to scale the recipe based on like other parameters, it, it will now know um, what that unit means. Awesome. So there's, I just want to be clear here. There's no, you cannot define what a bottle is like the word bottle, because that's just an empty container unit here, but you can create your own new bottle units. So by naming this one bottle one liter, we know and we have defined that that is a one liter unit of measure in this bottle. Uh, it's weird language, but that's how that works. So why is this one red and what do I do? It's broken. Um, this one is red because Mies doesn't recognize it as an ingredient in the database of system ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems to me in reading this recipe that this is likely something that's made in house and not necessarily an ingredient. Um, so this one, I would say, if you click on the ingredient, it brings this drop down, and you can choose to create a recipe. Um, and what that's going to do is create a brand new empty blank recipe um, from this view and then once we click done in this recipe, we can see um, by that little arrow right there that it's a recipe, but in going into it is where you could add the ingredients for that recipe and edit um, as needed. So I could go in here and add that in, but let's say, inst I actually, I mean, you're giving me way too much credit. I, I buy veal reduction, but <laughs> definitely, definitely buying that in. So how do I do that? Um, so at this point, since we already created it, maybe we call it veal, veal demi or yeah, that works. Um, so if, once you type in the unique name of the ingredient, um, you can actually create a brand new ingredient from this view as well. So you would just click create new ingredient. Um, and there it is. Yeah. Perfect. So now if I clicked on that, that takes me to an ingredient page as opposed to this, another sub recipe. Uh, and that makes much more sense to me. Okay, great. Because yeah, we don't we have to, we don't have time for this. I make more delays. Like I feel like I'm already ahead of the curve. <laughs> um, okay, so now I've got now we have the prep method. So is there like a way to get back to that bulk add like where I just had that big box, or do I have to go through this and do this individually? Um, no, you can click on that button that says add prep steps on the very right hand side, and it will bring it up just for the prep method um, side of it. Awesome. So now I'm going to take this because it's a prep step and then this guy. Oh, it hurts. Uh, and <laughs> this guy. Okay. And I'm going to show you. Uh, a hack. This is how I would fix this if I were doing this, um, just to get rid of the all caps. If you have recipes that are written in all caps and you don't want it to be like that, if you copy and paste, so I'm going to take this prep method and copy and paste it into a Microsoft Word document. So this is one way of doing it. There are many. Uh, I'm going to highlight all of that and then I'm going to push shift F3 and I can cycle through. Do I want it all lowercase? Do I want to capitalize every, the first part? That's what I would like to do. So quick trick, if you have word, use it. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan. Cause it just, it hurts my eyes less. Uh, I'm getting on in years, what can I say? Okay, so done or would you fix something here? 
I mean, this looks great. These are all pretty straightforward. Um, the one thing to note about copying and pasting um, into these fields is anytime you have a line break or essentially anytime you have like an enter, that you've yeah. had enter on the keyboard, um, it's going to recognize it as one, you know, the next step. step. So there's a couple um, things here, I think, where like we're probably, we're taking that to sec. And then adding the veal reduction of peppercorns, that's all kind of one step, maybe. Maybe you could separate it, but I wouldn't. Um, and then, yeah, I think we're there. Yep. Good. Looks good to me. Chinois does not have an E, who knew? Okay. All right, so now I have prep steps and I have ingredients. I don't have a yield. Um, gonna make this so that it yields one gallon because I just found out that it yields one gallon just so that it has complete picture up here so it's always best practice to have a yield for every recipe um, and if you don't know what it is the next time you make it stop take a measurement whether it's in weight volume or if maybe your yield is one serving or a hundred servings or whatever how are you going to use this recipe that's what your yield is um, if you know that you're going to ask your cook to make 10 gallons of Bordelais sauce, then you want to write it in gallons, right? How are you going to call for that? Okay, so how could we make this better? Like, I want to be the coolest of the cool of me's recipe writers. What are, what are the, what's the next level, Jess? Take me to 2.0. Um, some things you can do to your recipes would be to add notes, um, add headers. Um, so you have the option to add headers on both the ingredient side and the prep method side. Um, and that would make sense maybe based on your steps. Um, you know, in this case, we could say vegetables for sauteing and you could make a header um, and then you could make one for the reduction part or adding the... Um... Sauteing is a weird word to write. So I'm just gonna put it <laughs> and then drag this to my vegetables. And then, yeah. then that's like our first set. And then I think our second set starts at wine. So then maybe, Another I don't one. know what you would call that uh, second set, perfect. So we put that here and we can break that up a little bit. Okay, so now we've got first set, second set. I noticed that like this recipe says add the wine reduction, well, add the wine reduce. So I would fix that, but um, until almost dry and then add veal reduction and peppercorns, but it doesn't talk about vinegar or sugar at all. Oh, true. So weird. Um, so like just best practices, make sure that your ingredients that there's a method for all of your ingredients that you've included that because otherwise the cook gets to the bottom here to the bottom of the the recipe over here and they would never use these two things i'm sure that's just seasoning to taste or whatever although i don't know that i've ever used sugar in the raw for bordelaise but <laughs> each their own. um anyway okay so just to show what that would look like so now we've broken that up so if you're a cook reading through this, these headers really help to like space it out. So it's not just this overwhelming list of ingredients. It's, oh, I can see and I can follow. I've done all of this. I've done the vegetables for saute. I know my second set, I'm gonna get this meat ready before I move on to the next step. Um, okay, that's cool. And then you also said a note, Jess. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so you can add notes uh, also to either side of the, um recipe. So a note could be anything that doesn't really necessarily fit into a category of a prep step or an ingredient. Um, you could say like, make sure to cool this, you know, cooling practices or um, anything, you know, also on the ingredient side, you could add a note that says something like optional substitutions, um, you know, ingredients that could potentially be in the recipe. If you ran out of, I don't know, the red wine vinegar, what you could add instead, um, things like that. Um, and the notes actually have a lot more um, editability. So you can change the color of the font. Um, you can change that it's bold, you can add bullets. Um, so it's just another way to like 
add extra information to your recipes that maybe isn't necessarily in, in the prep method or an ingredient. One thing, that's a great point, Jess. One thing I like to call out here is um, that you can also uh, link things in your notes so you can create hyperlinks. So let's say you have a, a website that you use all the time for methods of straining through a chinois. I know we're reaching here, but like, let's just say mm -hmm. you have that and you want them to follow this practice from this chef that taught you and whatever. And so there's this YouTube video that you want them to be able to reference. You could link that. So let's say um, we took that doc or whatever. Let me find a random, we'll just go to YouTube. There we go. All right, so we could take the URL and let's say you, um, if you aren't sure how to strain this properly, watch this video. And the words this video, I'm gonna highlight those and then hit this fancy chain link button. And here I'm gonna paste in youtube.com because this video doesn't exist. And then that will, I can set this to either open in the current window or a new window and then when the cook is reading through this, they can see this note, you know, red, if you want them to feel bad about it, um, but it also really stands out. And then uh, there's a really simple like, oh, okay, if I go to this, it's going to take me directly to in a new window uh, to YouTube, which is not where we want our cooks to go, but maybe you have a specific spot or uh, an image or something that you could also put in here. So you can put links, you can put pictures, um, videos in there as well, uh, or videos in your prep steps, at least. So there's definitely ways to like trick this out to get them all of the information that they would need on the one page. One thing I also wanted to point out that I kind of skimmed over is how to change the order of these things. So this little six dot grabber thing. So when my mouse changes to uh, a hand, that's an indication that like I can slide this and I can kind of shift this through the ingredients and kind of treat them like playing cards. Um, so if you're wondering how to kind of move things up, let's say I want this at the very top of my ingredients because it's the most important thing, or I would like this because um, it's a very important note uh, to be at the top, that can be there. So that's a header, this is a note, and you can add both of them on either side, add header, add note, Again, this is a note, this is a header, add header, add note can happen there. All right. Um, one other thing I wanted to say too is if you say you forgot to add one ingredient, but it feels like you don't really wanna like copy and paste it, um, you can actually add the ingredients individually as well. I tend to not do this, but if you, you know, just for like a one ingredient that you're searching for, it makes it super easy. Um, so you can, you know, go in there and type, start typing in um, the ingredients and select them from the list. Um, so this and is this list is clearly missing salt. Just saying, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. with vinegar and sugar. Um, yeah. Okay. So when I do that, um, if I I have to click or I can hit enter, right? So mm -hmm. if I click on the ingredient, that that calls it set. You can also, mm -hmm. if it brings up the right ingredient and it's there, you can just hit enter and it'll, yeah. So if I just type it in and hit enter, that links it automatically. And you can also type in the quantity and unit if you want. So you could type in, you know, one tablespoon of salt. Um, Let's be serious. <laughs> oh, there, okay. And so, yeah, it will grab, um, it will recognize if you do it with, um, with, two, with the quantity and units unit. that we use, uh, there that like, um, that don't really have a measurement attached are to taste or as needed. So if you're writing in something, best practice is to always have this, uh, the unit filled in just so that as a cook, you're reading through and you understand right away that salt is to taste. Okay. And when it comes down to a calculation, if you're costing this recipe or attaching nutritionals to that recipe, that calculation will come through as nil. So it will be marked as a zero. So just understand that for like, if you know that you're going to add a decent amount of salt and you are, you are curious what that's going to do to your costs, then you're gonna to wanna to put an actual measurement in there. If you're not concerned about costing or nutrition, best practice is to just use the word to taste 
as a unit. It's okay. Okay. All right. I think maybe we open the floor for questions at this point. Anybody have any? Can you show Can us, you how, show to us how to scale? Yes. yes. So scaling happens whether or not you have a yield, because automatically when you write a recipe, let's say we take away this yield for now, the horror. Uh, all right. So now we have a batch size automatically. Whatever you wrote your recipe in is your default batch size. So that is important to note, because if you are always coming back to scale it frequently, um, maybe it actually should be written as a five times batch should be the default, right? Um, th th because that's the most common way that you make it. it really depends on your kitchen. So in scaling, if I were in here uh, as a viewer, so I would not have edit access. So this button would be gone. Um, I can hit over here, click on the X, the batch size. Let's say I want to do a five times batch. There she goes. The math happens automatically. That's very nice, my goodness. Um, if I wanted, let's say I want a 25 times batch because we've got a big catering event coming up. I just type in the number 25 and then hit enter. So it is a little confusing because there's an X on all of these, but if you put an X there, it, it messes everything up. So just forget the X, put in the number that you want to multiply by. Um, let's say we want to do a 500 times batch because it's graduation weekend and who knows what's going to happen. Um, that's a lot of border ways. <laughs> a thousand bottles to fill. Yeah. So uh, when I go back into edit, it returns everything back to the one times batch, right? So let's put this yield in here and you can show what that does. Because I could also say, all right, I need 25 gallons of this sauce this weekend. That is going to, I can change this as a viewer as well. So if you tell your cook you need to make 10 gallons of this sauce, that'll show up here. Um, so you can scale on either side, whether it's batch size, make a five times batch of this, or it's, Hey, make 10 and a half gallons. You can do that. You can also change the unit here. So let's say, um, I want you to make liters of this. Uh, all right. So let's say I need 10 liters of this sauce. I can change that as well. Cause I'm going volume to volume there. All right. What if I only have a half bottle of wine because I drank the other half? Great question, Carrie. What we would do is come down here and say, all right, I only have 0.5 bottles of wine. This is how much sauce I can make, chef. Uh, it's not a lot. I'm really sorry. Maybe we put this into milliliters so we can see. It's actually 0.3 milliliters of Bordelais is what you would end <laughs> up with if you, if you drank half that bottle. So it's an important piece. Um, great question though. Any other questions at this time? I think we're at the end. So we are recording this uh, and this will be available on our webinars site. That's www.getmes.com slash webinars. We are launching the community, uh, which is going to be an awesome place where you can come and share best practices and tips and tricks and struggles um, with each other. That's going to be launching on the 15th of June um, with a very small group of people. And then we'll be rolling it out slowly to everybody as we develop. Uh, if you're interested in that and you're not already signed up, please put uh, something in the chat and we'll note you down. And yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, Jess. I appreciate you um, and all of your expertise in the uh, world of recipe entry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.